Hello, I'm Donald Leggett, and welcome to the latest London Southeast CEO interview. We're joined today by Morris Healy, CEO of Aimlisted Glantis Holdings, and they are the global supplier of automated accounts payable systems. Uh, Glantis, as you probably know, are focused on both organic and acquisitive growth, and they've just acquired a St Albans based business called Meridian Cost Benefit for around £3 million. And in addition, Glantis recently partnered with a business called VAT IT. Well, welcome, Morris. Whereabouts in the world are you speaking uh, to us from today? I never quite know where you are. No, I've been moving around a bit. Good to see you again, Donald. Um, Great to see you, Morris. Really, you're look, looking well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm actually in Northern Ireland uh, today. So um, we had a few meetings up here uh, today and um, I managed to steal an office to have a conversation with you. Fantastic. I'm very glad you did. Now, you. To, to business. MCB, Meridian Cost Benefit. It may cost you up to £3 million. So what does that buy you? And what, what cross-selling and strategic opportunities does it open up for you? Yeah, so it, it, it does a few things for us, Donald. First of all, in terms of the uh, acquisition of £3 million, um, pounds, it, um, it has a revenue of about £1.5 million, pounds, um, historic revenues. Um, it's got a EBITDA of about 400 grand before we start uh, putting in uh, some synergies into that. Um, there are immediate things that are happening with the founders leaving. So it'll be about five times EBITDA before we get into um, synergies and both cost synergies and uh, revenue synergies. So they're the kind of numbers on it. And then from a point of view of customers, it's got um about 44 i think customers uh, all in our space all with uh, real needs in the ap but significantly it also has a lot of government and semi-state uh, organizations that we haven't got at the moment so it's a big opportunity for us to get into that market and with that referenceability, we can replicate the offers across our entire group so it's a really good positive one from that point of view uh, and then it's bringing us people, you know, we've been very uh, successful at integrating companies and um, in EMEA, especially now, it brings uh, new salespeople into the, into the fray and skill sets that uh, we desperately need and knowledge. So all in all, a really good acquisition and a positive acquisition, albeit, you know, a small enough acquisition. I'm going to ask you a, a, what appears dumb question, but sometimes, sometimes the simple questions are the best. Uh, what does a recovery and specialist utility auditing service actually do? <laughs> well, apart from getting you a lot of words in Scrabble or a lot of points in Scrabble. Apart from Z. They didn't get, they didn't get Z in there. They got everything else in there. Everything else, yeah. You just need a triple word score in there and it'll all work out fine. So basically, they, they do a lot of uh, things. So if you, if you think about what we do with recovery, we're working uh, with our customers to recover lost credits. Um, they're doing the same with government bodies, but they also have a specialist skill that focuses on utility payments. So large utility, these organizations, they get so big that it could be anything from electricity to water to mobile phone bills that you lose track of where it's at and you lose track of uh, deals that you've done and not knowing if you're being charged the right amount across the piece. Uh, across the whole organization and they've become specialists in in that and working in that area so again a nice new addition a kind of a niche specialist skill that we'll be able to bring into our organ organization and run it across the piece works as great bolt on for you guys though no? oh it's fantastic uh, that's what i mean you know sometimes when we do tic they again we do duplicate payments they've been doing it for 20 years and had a know-how that we can and bring up into our technology and deliver it even more effectively and efficiently. And it's the same here with Meridian. They've got these specialist skills, knowledge and know-how that we can extract and then deliver more generically through the platform. So really positive bolt on. Um, you've, you've kind of answered this one really. How is the buy and build strategy getting on? And I was <laughs> gonna ask you about Boston TAC, I presume, or the Boston company that you've also bought. 
So yeah, but, 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 tell, tell me what this is your strategy essentially. It's, it's it's take the core, take your core business, and add on other specialisms. So it's going it's going great as by the sound of it. Yeah, it's going fantastic. I mean, if you think of the time we did the um, the IPO, down, we 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 said that um, the you know before the end of the year, and this is what another thing Meridian gives us. We said we hope to get two acquisitions done before uh, the end of year. It ticked that box. So again, we we delivered on that. Um, we said that our ambition was to get our revenue run rate to about $20 million. That pushes us over that mark, which is a significant landmark for us in terms of valuations in the States. Now, leaving aside our own valuation here, but in the States, when you've got $20 million with your own IP in the accounts payable market, which has become really hot, then the multiples in the state are in the, in the states are quite significant and five and six times revenue so it's got us to that um, and 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 we uh, we uh, achieved all of those things but the market is still there for us so yeah we're delighted to have uh, delivered what we said we would deliver at the time of the ipo um, and there are more exciting opportunities coming along and how much did you pay for tic in boston in boston we paid nine million dollars for tic um, at the time, that was around nine times uh, EBITDA, two and a quarter times revenue. Uh, and then when you add on the synergies we've been putting through since, we'd be down to five or six times EBITDA again. But again, that's the number side of it. What it's done for us in the American market is much more significant because it's brought us into a, a, a very strong space with the uh, duplicate payments, but it's actually established a brand. We did um, some events in September in Florida, where we rolled out the combination of TIC all under the Glantis banner. And we had no me by no means had we the biggest stand there, uh, but we were the busiest. You know, we had our screens up showing our analytics, showing how everything worked. Um, and it was a massively successful event. So we're establishing the brand really well in the United States at the moment. We're getting a lot of traction, a lot of inbound inquiries, and we're doing it without having spent a huge amount of money. Yes. Okay. Integrating business systems and business cultures, it can be tricky. Uh, you, you tell me you're doing fine. I believe you. Uh, is, this <laughs> something, is this something you're paying a lot of attention to? Because the bigger you get, the harder it gets. Yeah, no, it's it's something we're 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 very big on, and and we do a couple of things that are uh, clever, and and most things born out of uh, uh, bad experiences you learn from more than the good experiences. So when we do these um, acquisitions, the 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 first thing before we close the deal, we we're meeting the teams um, that we're acquiring. We're explaining to them how they fit into our organization, where the gaps are, what we're going to uh, be doing. So that by the time we do it on day one, everybody has a good understanding of what's going to be happening. And that makes things um, um, that makes things much easier so that you're not starting day one and people are uncertain and they're waiting a few months for news and everything goes a bit wobbly. So everybody knows from day one what is happening, what our strategy is and where everybody fits in the organization. So that's a big help to it. But if you look at it, even TIC, if you look at the press release as opposed to the RNS, um, you see a photograph there of the owner, Peter Welch of, um, uh, of Meridian, um, and he's with the owner of TIC. Uh, Carl Anderson, who's part of our acquisition and M&A team. And I will tell you the kind of positivity there is even post that deal. Carl was a significant part of working with Peter Welch in getting this deal done. Uh, himself and our CFO, Groiny McKeown, were the people who actually delivered the, uh, the deal. But when you've got that kind of enthusiasm from the uh, head of an acquired company. That'll give you an indication of how the integration has gone and the kind of spirit and, and mood that's in the organization right now. Okay, perfect. So let's take, the, you, you briefly touched on the financials, which is uh, all the way through there, which is fantastic. I know that the, the investors, you know, the retail investors want a little bit more on the financials. So give us a sense of how the core business is performing against your own key metrics. Tell, it, tell me what your key metrics are. And then my question, much my question is, and how are you performing against, against your own key metrics? Yeah, so our, our metrics are, um, I mean, we have 
obviously our analysts have uh, numbers out in the markets and I can't say too much about those, but we haven't made any negative announcements. So you can take your own conclusions from that. We always believe but, you much more than the analysts. Here. Let's, <laughs> let's be frank. You are the boss of your own company. Who are no, they? We're, 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 we're happy with our position at the moment before I get into any trouble or you'll get me into trouble, Donald. I'm so, getting you into trouble. It's true. Don't you mind. No, I mean, if there was any really adverse things, we would have to be saying something about it. So I'm not saying anything out of way to say that we haven't made any adverse announcements. So that's all going fine. But more importantly than that, though, Donald, is the there are other metrics uh, around what we're doing that we're getting more into it now as we're transferring um, people from services into subscriptions, as we're upselling um, some of these products. So we've changed even from day one, we've changed uh, how we present ourselves. We presented ourselves at the Gantas platform that did these things. We've broken it down into clear products that makes it easy for everybody to understand. So we have a duplicate payment products, a data shark, we've got DocuShark and automation, and we've got statement shark and statement reconciliation across the piece. And, up and that's shark up as in shark with the fin. As in what? shark with the fin, yeah. Why that's... shark with the fin? That's an interesting, if you're, a... <laughs> it makes you sound as if you're going to eat your clients, no? Um, well, I was hoping we'd eat the opposition, but if you want to... <laughs> <laughs> so it, it gives a flavor for the, the um, how, how the, these, um, these products cut through things uh, to the core of the data that we're, we're analyzing. And uh, that's the kind of sense we're driving. Our marketing people are working through a lot of things at the moment and all of that. But the big part is the analytics then that we're going across because more than just the recovery that we're doing for our clients, more just finding money. We are doing a deep dive into the analytics, into their spend, into their supplier ecosystem. And that's becoming really valuable to them. Uh, and it's a really important part of what we've integrated into all the products um, as we go forward. And, and, and your, your key, your key metrics, for Morris, your key metrics? Our key metrics are, uh, at the moment, we're about 50% subscription. Uh, that would have been when I was talking to you, Don, around 40%, something like that. So we'll keep driving up that subscription revenue uh, as we're going forward. The key metrics on revenue is to get to $20 million run rate. I think we've done that. Um, and next year's target is by the end of next year to be at a $50 million run rate through the combination of acquisitions, um, partnerships, and organic growth. And, and we have a path to that. We'd be very disappointed if we don't achieve that. Okay, why did you think the partnership with VAT IT was actually worth announcing as an RNS, Morris? Uh, and how do you actually nail down something as elusive as a partnership, which is much less clear cut than an acquisition? Acquisition, you're in charge and you say what's going to happen. But how do you actually get a, a partnership to work? It's a much more sy symbiotic thing. Yeah, and also it could be a complete waste of time, Donald, you know, if you don't get the right partnerships. I mean, um, we have very clear criteria around partnerships. Like what, what we don't want to be ever is one of 12 widgets that somebody is adding on to the end of, uh, and you've got salespeople who kind of aren't focusing on it. So we'll only partner with, with people who are in our space, providing a niche, generally a niche, um, uh, a niche product into that market. And we become a very strategic to their growth. So they will be depending on the partnerships to get the growth that they require. That focuses both parties. Um, and uh, when it's a nice fit, if they're talking to the right people, which in that idea to be talking to the right people, the, our kind of people, our customers, the AP departments of large organizations, and it's a nice bolt on for them or uh, products onto it because it gives a more holistic uh, solution and it, it can drive growth for them as well. Um, so yeah, all, it, it's very um, it's very particular. Um, uh, how it it fit the bill. Yeah, so they would be working on recovery specifically in taxes. They're excellent. They're world leader at it. They're brilliant at it. And when you're talking to the same, and we're over here talking about recovery and duplicate payments and other credits that they should be recovering then you can see how it's a very nice fit because we can actually, even through our clients, talk about bad IT's product and sell that in as an add-on to ours and they likewise can send it on to theirs. It's a benefit to both companies, strategically important to both companies. 
Okay, yeah. my final question to you, Morris. Uh, uh, when, what can we expect from Glantis in the coming months? What, what you, you, you said to me before we got here that, that, that you, you're expecting you know, the start of next year to be quite exciting. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're, we're actually entering a really exciting phase in the business. So everything we've said at the time of the IPO in terms of our, there is a buy and build, there is the partnerships and all of that going on. Um, and that's, that's, going, uh, that's going to proceed. Uh, and we have the pipeline and we're going to deliver on what we said around that. So we're very confident in that space. But there are other areas now that are becoming um, significant and strategic and important, especially to shareholders and to the share price. And that's the accumulation of data um, that we now have. You know, we've got over 100 of these uh, global organizations and we're talking about organizations that have a spend north of uh, a billion and have suppliers numbering you know 40,000 on on average so you can see the kind of data we're building up and analyzing spend um, in how it's all operating in the ecosystem we have things that are highlight any kind of fraudulent activities there's governance activities and all of that but more than that there is a tremendous value in that data and we have several ways of exploiting that. We're doing, we're working through the research on that at the moment. And I think early in the new year, we'll be making uh, some announcements as to how we're going to monetize that information and monetize that data. Um, and it's really exciting and it'll bring in some new partners. But um, yeah, I think that will be, I'd say we will be announcing something on that uh, early in Q1 and um, probably before the next acquisition uh, but then every acquisition drives that data and drives that value for us so we're pretty excited uh, around here at the moment with with the prospect of what we can do with that data it's a uh, it's an exciting time for us okay so watch that space morris healy ceo of glantis holdings thank you very much indeed for joining us from northern ireland as it happens today uh, to hear what fellow investors think of the stock Go to the Glantis Holdings pages on London Southeast or tell us what you think of Glantis on Twitter at London Southeast. You can Google London Southeast YouTube to receive alerts to interviews just like this one. So, my last thoughts thank you so much for watching and do stay safe. <laughs>